And we had a very poor start this morning. And of course, we had those weaker than expected consumer confidence numbers out of the US yesterday afternoon. Um, but we have seen a bit of a, a recovery on the market, still weaker though. Yes, and um, it's, you know, we literally see that, you know, it's probably in a lot of short covering. Um, you know, we see um, investors just getting back into the market. All your bears are, or we're quite happy this morning. Of course, we've had that string of corporate results out over the past couple of weeks, most of them better than expected, about 70% in fact. But we are starting to see economic data coming in. We had those housing figures last week which were better than expected, but of course the consumer confidence numbers not so good. Do you think that the focus is now perhaps shifting to that economic data as well? Yes, Stephen. Um, you know, we're seeing better, better profit results, but it's really, you know, the jobless data, you know, good GDP numbers or, or rather positive GD numbers are really what's going to drive, um, drive um, our markets. And we need to see those positive numbers coming through because we need to see consumers starting to spend again. And that's really what's going to drive us. So U.S. durable goods out this afternoon, very important considering we got um, bad U.S. Um, confidence numbers yesterday. So, you know, markets looking for good durable numbers this afternoon. And if those numbers aren't as good as expected, could we see some more downside to these markets? I think we will because you, um, in terms of the U.S., you know, they provide, um, you know, 20% of, or rather contribute to 20% of the world's GDP. So if their consumer base is not spending, you know, the lag in terms of global recovery is going to be longer than expected. Of course, we were chatting to Rob Dar earlier in the week, also at Ned Bank Capital, and he was saying the indices are at key levels at this stage. We saw the JSC All Share crossing the 24,000 mark last week. We've seen massive gains in the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones as well over the past few weeks, 11% 11, 11 gains, in fact. So do you think that if there's a, a reason to take money off the table, investors might do that? Yes, you know, if those numbers this afternoon come out worse than expected, you're going to see a lot of a lot of investors taking profits and you know that will definitely lead us lower. Of course we've had some data out ourselves. We had uh, money supply and credit extension figures this morning, much weaker than expected. Though we had the CPI out just half an hour ago, and that was better than expected with six point nine percent growth um, year on year in June, ex against expectations of about seven point one, seven point two percent. Yeah, in terms of the numbers, um, you know, in terms of the um, the consumer, sorry, the consumer or CPI numbers, it's, I mean, that really tells us that, you know, we, we're probably, or Nedbank's view is that we're probably going to get a cut, maybe 50, um, 50 to 100 basis points for the rest of the year. And, you know, we can see that, you know, um, Inflation is probably not as sticky as anticipated, so that good that really bodes well for consumers in terms of cuts for the rest of the year. And of course, with those money supply and credit extension numbers, it shows that consumers still aren't borrowing or aren't being given being lent money by the banks. Of course, that can't be good news for the banks going forward because their asset books are obviously going to shrink, and I should think retailers might also come under pressure, particularly, particularly credit retailers. Yes, it's, it's quite evident that consumers are not spending um, and you'll see that even with the, um, with the cut in interest rates, any, any excess cash is going back to repay loans. So your margins on your banks are going to be squeezed. And because consumers are not spending, you know, it, it, it's quite concerning. Your retailers are definitely going to come under pressure in the next six months um, before Christmas because, you know, in, in real terms, what are consumers spending their money on, you know, clothes, food? But as, as, as pressure increases, your jobless numbers increase this week, you know, you're going to see all the retailers starting to suffer. And of course, we had the economy shrinking by 6.4% in the first quarter. So all this data probably points to very weak growth or, or, or more shrinkage in the second quarter. Yes, um, Nedbank's view is that we'll probably um, shrink 2% in terms of GDP. But you know, one can expect probably um, worse numbers if if things continue, you know, really um, as, as you know as as they have been. Now we've seen our own earnings season starting to gain momentum. We had two sets of results out this morning. We had ArcelorMittal, um, and not really not re very good results at all. In fact, quite a big fall into into the negative. Yeah. Um, one really sees in the results that the RAND really hurt um, Oslo Mitchell. They really went from a 600 um, million profit to, you know, a 600 million um, loss. And that, you know, literally just hurt on um, their, um, their foreign exchange. Um, but they're, they're quite positive in, in 
for the third quarter. They're saying they, they see demand increasing from SA and they see steel prices continue um, continuing to rise. So take into account if the RAND stays at current levels, we that will be positive for uh, for OsloMittal in the, in the next six, six months. And of course, um, we have seen those price increases announced by ArcelorMittal, which, which should help them. Of course, the RAND has, has remained strong. It's still below eight. And that can't, that can't be good news for ArcelorMittal or for other resources companies at this stage. Yes, no. Um, in terms of the, the RAND strength, RAND strength does hurt our, 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 res, our recall, resource companies. So, you know, the RAND would have to stay at these levels in order for them um, to really make a profit, um, taking into account if steel prices do continue to increase and demand increases from Africa. So, yeah, it's important for RAND to stay at these levels. Also, a bit of a fall in profits at Mutual and Federal. Um, it does say that um, it's seen a bit of a recovery going into the second half of the year. It has cancelled its dividend, though, so not very good news for investors. No, but I think, you know, if one looks at the trading statement out in May, that this this cut in dividend was not really expected. You know, they really expect, uh, expected a 7% decline in their gross premiums. Um, and that's really come through, you know, they're facing um, capital requirement restraints. So really, I think it's probably the best move for mutual and federal going forward. And um, yeah, I think, you know, in, in, in the long term, our insurance companies are, you know, going to weather the storm. Of course, we have Anglo-American's results coming out on Friday. It withheld its full year dividend earlier this year. Do you think it's going to pay an interim dividend at this stage? Um, not, not really sure. I know in terms of the mandate from the CEO, you know, he did say that no dividend would be paid. You know, things might change. Capital requ re requirements might, you know, might get better. So, unfor you know, unfortunately, we don't, can't really see.